Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, as the case may be. Welcome to Trading Breakout Patterns. My name is Barbara Armstrong. I'm a coach with Schwab. Delighted to be with you this morning. And I'm coming to you with a bit of frustration. So why is that? Well, one, I set up a new Thinkorswim platform back in November. And there are some things that I've done to make it really easy for myself and some things that I haven't. So today we're going to talk about patience and planning to be profitable. And you know, what do I mean by that? Well, do we have ourselves set up ideally to take advantage of sectors that are either doing really well or doing really poorly? Um, when we see a breakout, are we confident in how we might trade that? And then when we see something that isn't quite there, how do we react? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So um, I'm glad that, uh, you know, we've got lots of people here with us live. I really appreciate each and every one of you that not only shows up live to help bring the class to life, but that also participates in the chat. If you are here for the very first time in this class, I'd love it if you would just type in a greeting so that we, we can welcome you. We link arms here together every uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time and and we're figuring this stuff out together. So hello to AP514 and Jane and David and Mark and Luis and Yuri and Life in the Fast Lane and Kevin and, and Larry and the rest of the gang. We also have Ken Rose here. He brings a wealth of experience. He's a friend and a fellow coach and he knows a ton about this stuff. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can also ask questions in the archives by just typing something into the comment section down below. If you love the class, you're welcome to type that in. But if you have a specific question, um, please, please ask. Um, because if you have that question, chances are there are a lot of other people with the same question and you're doing us all a favor by asking it. Um, the uh, other way that you can communicate with me and that Ken and I can communicate with you is through the land of Twitter, formerly, or, you know, X, formerly known as Twitter, um, it, I, I invite you to follow us there. So my handle at Barb Armstrong CS, Ken's handle at Ken Rose CS. You're also going to want to hit the subscribe button. And, you know, like word on the street is that 60 to 85% of you have not subscribed to this channel. So if you've already subscribed, don't hit it again or you'll unsubscribe yourself. But um, it's free to subscribe and then you'll... You know, you can easily turn on your notifications and then get a reminder when this class is happening next week and that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's get right down to business because as usual, um, our 45 minutes uh, tends to go by pretty fast. So we look at both stocks and options in this class and know that from an options perspective, options do carry a high level of risk. They aren't necessarily suitable for all investors. Um, if you want to trade options with Schwab, you have to apply for option trading privileges and not all will qualify. Also, there are transaction fees when we trade options and we have to take those into account as well. Okay, we use the paper money software application on the Thinkorswim uh, desktop platform. It's a brilliant place for you to be able to learn and figure things out without costing yourself real money in the event that you make a mistake in, in that you didn't either understand the trading strategy that you were trying to implement or you didn't understand how to put it into the system. So this is a place for you to work out the kinks. Okay, so um, th this is great, but there are a couple of nuances and differences. One is that if we sell an option, a short option will never be assigned early in paper money. Um, now that can happen um, in a live account and I've seen it happen. And the first time it happened, it was with a short put vertical spread for me um, and it kind of freaked me out. So, you know, <laughs> and then I just had to say like, okay, stay calm, like, you know, I know what to do here. And so just know that that can happen and that you have choices when that happens, um, but you have to be aware that can happen at any time in a live account. Okay, so, and, and know that, and you know, we've spelled that out here. Um, know that when we use stops and we often use stops and targets in this class, that it doesn't guarantee that we're going to get out at exactly that price. And I had someone in the getting started with options class yesterday say, well, if I'm going to put in an exit to get out at a 50% loss, why wouldn't I double my position size? It's like, well, if the stock gaps down and, and you get out at 100% loss, now you've lost twice as much as you 
wanted your max loss to be. And that is never a happy day. So, but you know, you make your own set of trading plans and rules and away we go. So before we go over to the platform, I just want to say that um, you know, what we're going to cover today, we're going to go out and have a look at what's going on in the markets. We're still in the throes of the earnings season um, tonight. And I jotted down a couple of names. Well, we've got NVIDIA coming, um, you know, with earnings. And, you know, that's a pretty big deal. But there are some other, you know, players in the mix coming with earnings today as well. Um, and so Etsy is another one of those. So, um, you know, all of these things can can influence not only those particular stocks, but their sectors. And um, if they're big enough, sometimes the market um, in general. So we're going to have a quick look at what's going on. We're going to talk about how to be um, organized in our approach and we're going to set up some scans. So for those of you who have been asking me nicely for months um, to show some basic scans, we're going to do a really easy one today and um, we're going to do a couple of them and then we're going to look at placing some new trades. So let's get out and have a look at what's going on in the market. I did promise we'd look at a, a, a trade that we placed on Nutanix last week, but let's start with the S&P. So, you know, we have a significantly, you know, this, the, the S&P is up significantly. Um, you know, when we take a look at, if we're looking at a one-year chart, sorry. Uh, you know, this index is up 24% in the last 12 months. You know, so that is is very bullish. You know, I think in the last 50 years, on average, the S&P, you know, the average return is, has been between 10 and 11 percent. So we're sitting at double that. Now, you know, and some might say, well, I thought that the S&P was pulling back. Well, a three-day pullback does not a trend, you know, a change in trend necessarily make. So, you know, some might argue that we're just looking at another um, bull flag set up here. And this candle that we're looking at today might indicate that it has found its bottom. Okay. Yeah, so we've got FOMC minutes coming today. So, you know, on days like that, and when you have a really big player like NVIDIA announcing, sometimes the market's a little skittish. Um, and, you know, when we look at our NASDAQ, which is our tech-heavy index, um, you know, it's up 44% in the last 12 months, you know, which is well, or let me just come here. Yeah, about 44% in the last 12 months. And it too has had a three-day pullback. But, you know, it's still above the 30-day moving average. We have a doji pattern in this candle uh, would indicate that what we have is likely, you know, or, or might be um, an indication that this pullback is, is drawing to a close. You know, like we had this inverted hammer here at a support level. And then, you know, one that was bearish, then one that was bullish, and then it started to move again. Now, will that happen this time? Well, we won't know until it either happens or it doesn't. But, you know, this is an indication that this might happen. Okay. Um, when we look at the Dow, and, you know, as of next Monday, Amazon is going to be added to the Dow 30, and Walgreen is being given the boot. And I'll, I'm going to post that on Twitter after um, you know, we finish this class and that that's some of the kind of information that we share, um, you know, sometimes on on X. But when we look at the Dow, like it too, like, you know, this is a one year chart. It's up 16 percent in the last year, which is still pretty stellar, even though it is in third place between the overachieving Dow and, and the S&P 500. Um, and again, we have this candle pattern you know, saying that the bulls and the bears are kind of duking it out and they're at a bit of an impasse. And again, it's it may be below the 10 day moving average, but it's certainly above the 30. And it's come back to the 30, you know, a few times here. Okay, so, you know, still overall relatively bullish. Okay, how about the Russell? Well, the Russell, it is in the top end of this range, and it's been in this range now for almost two years. Um, but, you know, it, it, we saw these big sweeping, you know, it would go down to the 1600-ish or 1650-ish level and then swing like all the way back up to close to 2000. 
And I'd say, you know, it would kiss the ring and then come back down again. Well, this time it not only kissed the ring, it kissed the ring and then kept on going. And then when it came back, it came back to this 1900 level, not the 1650-ish level. And so this index, you know, it's, it's in the green, you know, up 5%. In fourth place, this is our small caps, 2,000 of the biggest of the small boys is how I like to describe them. And, and you know, the, the largest ones in here, these are multi-billion dollar companies. So they're not exactly, you know, it, Joe's Garage kind of type level companies, not to make any, um, you know, not to cast any aspersion on either Joe or garages, but, you know, it, it, these aren't little mom and pop type type organizations. They're big. Okay, so um, that's our Russell. And then when we come and we look at the VIX, um, it, it's up today. Now, are we surprised, you know, with some of these big companies like NVIDIA and not to harp on NVIDIA, it's just one company, but it is one that's getting a lot of press these days. And, and, um, and you know, the FOMC minutes and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, when we look at this, this index is still down 30%. Um, in the in the last 12 months and it's still sitting, you know, 15, 16. Now that's higher than it's been for a while. Like if we come over here, it's the highest it's been this year. But, you know, relative to where it's been, you know, it, it's, you know, the highest it's been since November. Um, but, you know, we're only a day away from this either potentially going up dramatically or, or coming down dramatically. Um, it, it, Rob, the reason, so Rob is asking a question in the chat and he's saying, is there a reason that you have this percentage? And often I'll bring this percentage up because we aren't very far into the year and, and this will give me the, the amount, the index is up in the last 12 months. If I bring up a 12 month chart, that's the only reason I have that percentage there. And then once I'm done with that, um, I tend to change it back. Okay, so and to change it back, you just go to this little icon below patterns and then click, unclick price as a percentage, and now we're back to the numbers. Okay, yeah, I, I just use it to get a sense of where we, we are with the indexes. Okay, so and it was Brent Morris that showed me how to do that. You know, I didn't even know that was a feature on the platform. This is the this is such a functionally rich platform. I'm still learning things about it. And, and you know, if you're new to using the Thinkorswim platform, please don't feel you have to know everything about it because if I had to know everything about it, I wouldn't have placed a trade yet. I probably use 5% of what's available on this platform. And yet I'm able to do everything that I want to do to achieve my goals, okay? So the other thing that we tend to look at when we do an overview is this is just a public watch list here are the S&P 500 sector indices, and then I've customized it because I, you know, if we bring this over, I don't know what S&P 50 means, but I, so I added description, and I don't really care what the bid and ask are either, but I, I'm looking for, you know, which has been the strongest sector over the last three months, and that's communications, financial, and healthcare, and then, you know, are we starting to rotate into different sectors? Well, look at this, like energy, communications, and industrial. So energy wasn't in the top three over the last three months, was it? And all of a sudden, it's like gone up to first place. Maybe we want to look at some stocks in there. Maybe there are some stocks breaking out. Okay. So if you said, well, I'd like to look at stocks, and, and you know, if we link this, and I have, to here and we start clicking through these we can see you know these sectors and i bet you energy will look interesting when we come to that so you know here we have a sector that has been downtrending right and it has that you know we're seeing a breakout here and so could we trade the index? Well, if you go to, Con Connie has a class called Trading ETFs on Monday. So you could go to that class to see if there's an opportunity, you know, to trade an index there. 
Um, but you know, we might just want to look at particular stocks within the index. So it, it, if you wanted to look at stocks in an index, how might you do that? Well, you might want to bring up a watch list. And what I did years ago um, was I created a watch list for every sector. But one of the things we could do is we could create a scan and that would be so much faster. So I'm just going to show you a quick and easy way to do these scans and you can do them yourself. And, and within probably 15 minutes, you could have all 11 sectors because we have 11 sectors in the market. Um, you could have scans created for all of them. So we're gonna come out to scan. And we want, we don't want every stock in the energy sector, or if we wanted to do something bullish, because the market has overall been bullish, which would make sense, we might want to say, okay, we want to look at communications sector, the financial sector, the healthcare sector, and, and, and we might want to add energy because it's been kind of coming around the bend um, in the in the last in the last month. So if I say I want to scan and let's look at what I've already done. So if I come here to sectors and personal, I before the class, I set up one for communications, financials, and real estate. Okay, so let's say we want to do energy now. I'm going to come, say scan in, I'm going to come to public and I'm going to choose S&P 500 because I just want stocks. I, you know, part of our trading plan for almost everything is that we want stocks that trade on average a million shares a day or more. We want options if we're going to do an options trade that are heavily traded, you know, and have liquidity and all this kind of stuff. So if we look at a, a stock in the real estate sector that's also part of the S&P, it's more likely to meet our rules. Um, regarding trading, okay? So um, uh, there are some questions in the chat and I'll come back to those in a minute. Okay, so we just want stocks in the S&P that are part of the real estate sector and that's it. We aren't even gonna add any other filters. We're gonna say, just scan, give me every stock and there are 31 of them. And so now that I have that list, I'm going to come to these three little hamburger lines on the right beside where it says showing 31 of 31, I am going to click on that and save it as a watch list. And when I do that, it says, okay, what do you want to call it? And I want to call it sector real estate. Okay, save. Oh, you know what? We were going to do energy. I've already done that one. So let's come down here to buy industry. We're gonna pick energy, select all the energy stocks, scan. We've got 23 stocks that are in the energy sector that are, are also part of the S&P. We're gonna save that as a watch list. We're gonna call that sector-energy and save. Okay, and then, you know, if you want to set up all of these and just take 20 minutes to do that, um, we might want to do, you know, I, I've, I've done financials, so we might say, okay, let's come down to buy industry and let's do consumer discretionary. Select them all, scan, showing 53 of 53, um, create a watch list. Sector consumer discretionary. And then we're going to do staples. And so we can see that then when I come over here to watch list and I click on it, um, and you'll notice that this watch list, here's the default. When I because I created a new watch list, it just gives me the symbol. When well, when I'm looking at um you know, a regular stock, I'm cool with just seeing the ticker symbol. I, but I don't care about, you know, the bid and the ask. So now if I want to customize these, I can come out and add the scripts. Okay, and these are scripts. 
So I don't want to take the whole class to go over this, this stuff, but what you can do, let me just bring it up here. I should have moved that over earlier. So what you can do is come out here Um, and you're going to want to sort. So this is what I've suggested that you subscribe to. So if you come to home, you'll see that, you know, here's the class. This is how many of you probably started watching this class today. Then if you come to playlists, we will likely rename this soon. So don't be surprised if it gets a new name because I, I just want to put trade management things in here, but I've created a bunch of think or swim mini sessions because I get asked a lot, how do you customize your watch list? And so I walk you through exactly how I customize the watch list. Okay. And then there's another one. So, so somebody asked me how I got that year to date month to date. I did that by adding a script. So I did a little, these are all like, this one's eight minutes long. This one's, you know, this one's seven minutes long. This one's eight. Um, and then I also did one on, on how I set up my chart. Um, and, you know, then there's one on customizing the monitor tab, how you set up groups. I just did one on customizing the option chain and some of the features on the option chain you might not be aware of. Um, how to use notes and then once you've done a note how to access it again um, you know so so all of that is there for you to be able to access okay yeah so and and then I have all the scripts in the um, if there is a script that isn't working let Greg let me know which one it is and then I will I'll repost it but if you come to my X feed in the uh, and, and this will be changing next week, so there will be a new one up here, but it will look very similar. And so if you come here, if you want this year to date, month to date, here's the script. And these are case sensitive, they aren't guaranteed as to accuracy. Um, and then here's this, you know, three month return from for the watch list and the four week return. And then if you're not sure of how to add them, you can either watch that those short videos or you can come here and it'll walk you through exactly how to do that. Okay. Okay, so again, Greg, I need to know exactly which one um, you're having trouble with and then I can I can work on that. So, you know, to be organized, if you're just saying, okay, um, one of the things that I heard uh, this morning was that over 50% of stocks in the financial sector are within 5% of their 52 week high. So this is, you know, a sector that, um, you know, got hit hard last year. Okay, let me write that down. That got hit hard last year in the first half of the year and is now coming back nicely. So, you know, we, might we see some breakouts there? And, you know, we really don't care about what's in here. If we just want the list of stocks, we could come here and say, okay, let's come to the personal lists I've created and let's look at this financial sector. And then I'm going to link my chart. Um, you can call it whatever number you want, but just have them be the same. And then I can just start clicking through. And, and start looking for the type, you know, whatever you're looking for. In this class, we're looking for breakouts. And so one of my frustrations today was I was having trouble finding breakouts. And so I found a stock like here's, you know, Mickey D's or McDonald's. And, you know, if we kind of bring up a one-year chart, you know, what have we got happening here? What, how would you describe this pattern? Well, I kind of, you know, when I play I Spy with this, I kind of see that I have to erase my, my previous notes here. But when I come out, I kind of see this inverted head and shoulders pattern. And it broke out once. And, you know, like my friend said, you know, it does it cross the river and come back and test the ice and bounce. So it looked like it was a one day pullback and then it bounced and then it's like, oh no, just kidding. This wasn't a real breakout, it was a fake out. So we've got this inverted head and shoulders pattern, but is it complete? 
you know, we've just had it. Yeah, Kevin, you're absolutely right. Dave, you got it. Like, so it's been moving to the upside, but has it broken out? Has it, you know, bonked its head on this ceiling and then managed to break through yet? No. So what do we do? Well, you take one hand and you hold the other hand up and then you, you know, some traders at least might say, and then I'm going to put them firmly under my butt and I'm going to sit on them until I see that breakout happen. And others might say, like, are you nuts? Like, this is crazy. Like, like it, it won't, we, that means we'd be paying over 300. And if we bought it right now, you know, if we bought the stock or we bought a call, we'd be buying it 294. Isn't that the smarter decision? Well, yes, until it comes up here and bonks its head and goes, ouch, and then rolls back down and you're going, oh, maybe there was something to that idea of waiting for it to break out and maybe come back and retest, you know, b before. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I looked at that and went, yeah, close, but no cigar. Okay, so let's look at another one. Um, and uh, Honeywell came up. And, you know, like, so there's different types of breakouts. Like that, the first one we looked at was an inverted head and shoulders. This, when I look at this, it looks kind of like a sideways double bottom, right? Or, or some might just say, I'm going to look at this. Maybe you draw your line this way. Oh, I've got that. I kind of draw it that way. <laughs> and then we can extend that. And we can duplicate this line and then just bring it up here. And that kind of gets rid of these two candles that were kind of an anomaly. But, you know, if we have this double bottom pattern, has it broken out yet? Yeah, no, it has not. So again, raise your right hand, raise your left hand, insert under the butt. And, you, and we're going to just wait. And, you know, and... And what is a little bit troubling here is what are we seeing? What kind of candle pattern? It's the same candle pattern that I was just talking about saying, you know, the bulls and the bears have been duking it out. And we have this doji type pattern that is saying it might be getting tired. And when that happens at support, we might be expecting to see a bounce to the upside. But when it happens at resistance or at the ceiling, this sucker might just roll over and go back down. Now, it might punch through too. But the last time we had a candle like this, like might I point this one out? I'm just going to hone in even a little bit tighter. Um, and you know what? Just because it happened in the past, like it says that right in, you know, the stuff I review at the beginning of the class, right? That, you know, just because it, it's happened before doesn't mean it'll happen again. But we came up here and we got that kind of candle and then it moved and we got this kind of candle at support and then it moved up. So if we're getting this kind of candle, so, you know, what might we do? This might be interesting to us and we might say, you know what, I'm going to, um, I'm going to watch this because if it breaks out and then, you know, it comes back, you know, we're good to go, right? Like, because you could say, well, if it does this and bounces, then I've got a breakout trade, but if it rolls over and it comes back, could we trade that? We, yeah, because this time when it rolled over, where did it come back to? Well, it came all the way back to here. And then this time when it, it failed, where did it come back to? All the way back to here. So if this starts to roll over and pull back, could we you know, buy a put and put a target in maybe down here around the 190-ish or the 188 level. We could. But what what is this candle telling us? Not enough, some might say, to make a decision. And so sometimes the best trade is no trade at all. You know, or yeah, you know, Dave is saying, you know, could we set an alert? And you know what? That's a really great idea because sometimes you know you'll say darn it i was looking at honeywell and then i forgot and then two weeks later you look at it and it's either come all the way down back here or it's you know broken out 
And, and so how would we set those alerts? You know, that's part of setting ourselves up for success. So we might say, well, if it goes above 200, let us know. And so we can just click on this on the chart and then come down here to alert and say, hey, if this goes above 200 or this 201, let us know. Um, diagonal breakout. And, and you'll get like, however you set this up, you know, you might get a text, you might get an email, you might get both, or you could say, hey, if it goes below today's low, and what's today's low, 198.43. So we could say, hey, if it goes below 198, let us know. So if you're just close to it on the chart, it brings up that price. So we're going to say, you know what, if it goes below just that 198 mark, maybe then, you know, bearish target trade question mark yeah yeah okay so there's two and and you could go back to mcdonald's and, and we could do the same thing i'm not suggesting you get in your car and drive to mcdonald's for lunch that wasn't my recommendation but we could come back up here and say hey if it goes back above this like 297 level 298 we could do this same thing yeah set an alert and it's free you know just say hey if this goes above when this goes above if it goes above um breaking out so it just reminds us to go back and have a look at this stock okay okay so let's look at one now that actually has broken out tall. And so this one came with earnings yesterday. And so, you know, we could come in and we could look at the news. And, you know, if we wanted to do this on the platform, one of the things we can do along the very far right hand side, I didn't even know these hadn't even noticed that these were here for a very long time. But, you know, we can come and see because this thing just came with earnings, right? And so you could see, you know, what they're saying about this stock. And, um, you know, so it better than expected quarter one financial results um, issued, you know, EPS guidance for 24 that was above estimates. Um, you could, you know, scroll through and then you can click and read these if you want, you know, like the estimate was 178 for earnings per share. It came in at 225. Like that's a, that, that beat by a country mile. So we can see why it's up. But, you know, when we look at this, does it mean that we necessarily want to trade it? Well, not necessarily. And why not? Well, you know, it gapped up, but now it's pulling back. And sometimes what happens is when something gaps up, it might, you know, and, and it's continued to fall throughout the day. That's what this dark green candle means. And if you watch that little webcast, that, that mini session, um, you know, when you come here, I have my candle set up for candle trend. So when this candle is green, because if you just have candle, you might be saying like, why is her candle green? Because my candle's red. That just kind of bothers me for this candle to be red because the stock is up three and a half percent. So why do that's a it, that's a bullish event. So by making it candle trend, um, it, it it shows that it's a green candle because it's it's trading above today's high, but it's showing as dark green because it opened higher and it's now trading lower. You know, and, and today this this opened at uh, it opened at 110 and it's given three dollars of that back. And so if we look at that, we might say, well, it broke out above this kind of, you know, this 105 ish level. And so if we're saying, well, you know, if it came back to this kind of 105 level. I don't know why that doesn't have a price on it. Oh, it's okay. Let me get rid of this line and I'll draw a new line. 
So if it comes back down to maybe even just a dollar above that, this, you know, 10, yeah, 106. So this is at 105.69. So if it comes back a little bit more, we'd like to buy. And so we could create an alert here to say, you know, if it comes down again tomorrow, now if it goes up tomorrow, um, you know, we may just want to keep our eye on this one. But, you know, this had a, a nice result and real estate has been strong, has it not? And so, again, we might just want to put an alert in here. So, um, and that's at 106. So, yeah, if it comes down to 106, so at or below. So if it continues to come down for another day, then we'd get a notice. Watch for bounce off resistance. Okay. So when we look at this, you're going like, like, wow, she hasn't even placed a trade yet. What kind of class is this? Well, a class where you can be maybe grateful that you're learning like, you know, there's an old, Kenny Rogers song, know when to hold them and when to fold them. And, and it's not that we're holding um, or folding necessarily, but we, we know when to get in and, and when to say it's not quite time yet. Okay. So yeah, it's because it sometimes that best trade can actually be um, that no trade at all. And you might say, well, I'm looking at, at some other stocks and I heard today on the news that Amazon is being added to the Dow. And uh, you would be correct. As of Monday of next week, Amazon is going to be added to the Dow. And, and is this bouncing? Like it, it did break out here. But, you know, we're supposed to be talking about breakouts today. But, you know, so this one, it broke out, came up, and then it came back to this 165-ish. You know, the low that day was 165.75 came back there again, and today on this news, it's bouncing. But the market's feeling, you know, a little iffy, but, you know, could we come out here and do a short put vertical and say, well, what if it continues to go sideways? Well, as long as it stays above here, you know, might not that give us a bullish opportunity? And, and, and it could, but technically, is this a breakout today? No. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to honor the title, the title of the class. And news can absolutely cause a breakout. And, you know, this stock, it, I mean, it's only up half a percent. But, you know, do we think Amazon is going to continue to be around? It is up 10 percent, um, you know, year to date. You know, we're only halfway through February. So, you know, in the last year, and this is where, you know, for those that ask that question, why am I showing price as a percentage? Because if I just want to quickly see the one year on this, we can see, you know, this is a stock, it's up 77% in the last year. Yeah. And so if we did want to do a short put vertical, you know, how far would we go out? And it says here, we have one March 8th, expiring March 8th. Do we still have that trade on? So let's come and look at our monitor tab, activities and positions. So we do have a short put vertical here. And we're currently down a little bit. Why do you think that is? Might volatility be, be going up? And if volatility goes up, and this is something we've sold, we want volatility to go down. And so, it, you know, if this trade is already on, and where are our strikes? 165 and 160. So we're still in a good spot. This is probably a volatility um, increasing problem but if we were to place another trade today with a you know an expiration date so this is 16 days and you might say well do you want to take that kind of risk well at one point like three years ago in our trading a smaller account class apple was just so bullish and moving up and up and up often we would have three trades on the same stock we'd have one that was expiring in a week for a short put vertical one in two weeks and one in three weeks now, can that come back and bite you? Um, it can. But, you know, can it also, you know, work well um, when it's working well? 
And, and the answer to that is yes, again. So if we came out here and we said, well, if we came out to March 15th, so that's 23 days, you know, we have a short put vertical here at the 165, 160 strike. Could we kind of do the same type of thing? Uh, do we have lots of volume, 26 million shares, 13,000 contracts at the 165 and almost 50,000 at the 160? So could we look at that? And 84 on a 250 spread? It makes me think like, have we had earnings? Yes, we have, because that is a lot of premium. And you know, it's at, we're $3 above it. So we've got $3 of buffer. It's come down to this, you know, above 165 a couple of times. So if we look at that and we say, well, it looks solid. You know, and of course we're gonna position size knowing that we could be wrong. So if we got paid 83 and let's bring up our calculator. So if we made 83 on a risk of 250, so I'm gonna take 250 minus 83, how much could we lose? $167. Now the quick way to do that is just to bring this up and, and it will do it for us. And you know, if we take 83 divided by 160, like that's like a 50% return, which is is very high um, for a short vertical. 83 divided by 167. So that's a 49.7% return. And so if we say, okay, we could do, if we did three of those, how much are we risking? $504, how much can we risk? 500. So we're gonna do three and we're gonna put an exit in and say, hey, when we've got 80% of our max gain, we wanna exit this position and we're gonna set, this is the day of alerts because if we get to the point where this goes below 165, we may wanna exit this position. So confirm and send, we're gonna put this in our short put vertical group and then we're gonna come out to the chart and we're gonna add one last alert and say, hey, if this goes below 165, do we stay or do we go? Should we close out our short put vertical positions? And you know, you, you don't even have to worry about spelling. This is a note from you to you. Yeah. So um, Julio, it, you're going to have to watch this in the archives because I've just, I, I spent some time right at the beginning of the class on showing how to create watch lists by sector, okay? So if you go back and watch the, the archives, this will show us how to do that. And then the one thing I promised to do as we just wrap up here is I promised to show the Nutanix trade. So with NTNX, this is a tech stock, um, back on January 29th, we bought a call for $4.30 and um, just a couple of days later, it hit our target. It was a one ATR target. So just, a, you know, the amount it moves in an average day, the range it moves in an average day, we got out for $5.30. So how much did we make? Well, we just simply take our $5.50, we subtract the $4.30. So we made $1.20 on that one or $120, sorry. And if we wanna get our return on risk, how much could we have lost? We could have lost $430. So our return on risk on that one was 28%. And what do we call that? Well, we call it a win. You know, we call it a base hit. And are we happy? Yeah. Cause you know, base hits, we talked about that, you know, it's, if you can just get these little wins, little wins. And so that was that one. And, and just to go out and, and see the chart for those of you who maybe weren't in that class uh, where we talked about that one, NTNX. I mean, here's a stock that's gone from 23 to $60, um, you know, since last April. And so we placed the trade on this day. So this was a bull flag with a close above the high of the low day. 
and uh, we entered the trade here and it hit our target here. And, and, you know, and now like, is this breaking out? No, um, you know, but it, it might, it be coming and bouncing, um, you know, off a level that it's, it's been visit, it's visited a couple of times before. So this is another one we might want to watch. So guys, that's a wrap for today. So our focus today was on, um, knowing, you know, when to say yes and when to be patient and wait on how to set yourself up because once you've set up these watch lists um you know they're with you till you change them so you could invest you know 20 minutes or half an hour and set up watch lists for all 11 sectors and then when you want to look for something in a particular sector you can bring up your watch list and and easily click through your charts um and yeah and then we looked at the use of alerts. So that was really our focus for today. We placed an example trade on, um, which one was it? Let's come back out here, build orders. So we placed an example trade on Amazon. So guys, thanks for hanging with me. Up next is market and sector analysis with the fantastic Mr. Brent Moores. I wanna thank Ken Rose for all his help in the chat today and to each and every one of you for bringing your a game for investing in your financial future by attending a class like this and to those of you who are here live for being so participatory in the chat i appreciate it have a great day and we'll see you in a webcast coming up soon take care everyone